Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Scott Grolke. Serving with me is Pastor Melly Momo. We offer you a warm reminder of the presence of Jesus Christ here in Macomb and in remote worship with us. If you're in the church house, take a minute to complete a connection card and update our relationship with you. We ask for special prayers for the family of Mary Small who passed away this week at the age of 103. Ironically, I thought her mother had died 100 years ago during the Spanish influenza. A celebration for Mary will take place in the spring for those worshiping with us online. Please gather your own bread and wine or juice for the time of sacrament. Today we celebrate the good news that Jesus has come and remains present with us. Before Maureen brings her musical reflections, Rick Iverson would like to share some thoughts from the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Good morning. On behalf of the Staff Parish team, I'm announcing the retirement of our organist, Maureen Nation. Maureen has informed us that at the end of the school year, she will be retiring from teaching. She and her husband, John, will then be moving to the state of Tennessee. That means that we will be losing Maureen sometime probably in June. We are extremely grateful for her 31 years of service, faithful service here at Questly. <laughs> makes the sanctuary sound about three times as full as it is. We will certainly miss her. We will have a special time honoring her your service sometime on a Sunday morning, probably in May. Thank you.
God is good all the time. Please stand if you are able for our call to worship. Remember the good news. Jesus has come to us, been crucified for us, and been resurrected to meet us again. Remember that it is the news in which we stand and are saved. We gather to remember and proclaim the news with joy. We will testify to all that Christ is Lord. Join me in prayer. Lord God, we gather to worship you and are grateful for the gifts that surround us. We thank you for coming to us in Jesus, for his life message, for the resurrect, the crucifixion in which your saving love. We pray that in the time of music, words, and sacrament, we would meet him again in the name of the Lord in Christ. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn. Question. Who is Jesus? Does anybody else have anything? Yes? Um, yes, he is, he is a person. He was a real person. Now, how would you describe God as? What 
devout him as an elder. Are correct on that. <laughs> um, Um, even a brother, friend, um, is a friend to me because of it being helps people when they're just like our friend, our even our family members do the same thing. Our Dear God, help us to remember that you are all of these people that we have thought of here today. Amen. And Kinsey Miller, and you also have prayer requests in the bulletins. Let us go to the throne of God. Almighty oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for the time that you have given us to come together in your presence to worship you. Lord, I ask that you accept our act of worship this morning and bless us. I ask that your spirit, Lord, move upon each one of us and minister to us according to the need in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy and the many blessings that you have given us those to come above all the gift of life. Lord, I pray for your word that will be life in the life of this world. And I pray that, Lord, you help us learn from you, learn from one another. That you help us, Lord, reach out to those who don't know your words, don't know you, so that they will be able to know you. Inspire us, Lord, with your wisdom. Help us, I pray. Help us. Remembering at this time, those who are not feeling well, I lift them in your hands. Lord, I ask for that grace of healing to touch them wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Remembering those who have lost loved ones as well, asking that you meet them in this time of need, comfort them, Lord, and strengthen the faith of your children. I pray, Lord, for our nation. I ask that, Lord, your wisdom will be with our leaders that you help us, Lord, live according to your will, rebuking all powers of darkness in our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, I pray. Help us. We pray for peace in this world. Peace, Lord, peace. 
We pray for those who don't have anything right now, stranded, not, not, not knowing what to do. We ask that you reach to them. Send for a few angels, Lord, to serve and help them in this time of need. I thank you, Lord, for your love and your faithfulness. I know you hear our prayers as we lift our voices together, saying the way your son, Jesus Christ, continue to teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I ask for the ashes to please come forward. Lord of grace, Lord of mercy, I ask that you bless what you are about to give and multiply it for your work in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Old Testament reading is coming to us from Isaiah 52, verse 7 to 10. <clears throat> How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinel lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bare his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. I invite you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 for this reading, and then I invite you to stand for the reading of the New Testament. Now, 
Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you've come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. And he appeared to James and to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. He may be seated. Spirit of the living Christ, we've heard the ancient written word now come among us as the living word to feed our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell me the stories of Jesus. I love to hear things. I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. William Parker takes us back with his words back. When you first heard the story of Jesus, perhaps you were a child, so Southland Christian Church captured video of children telling the stories of Jesus. In this clip, the adults act out the parts and the voices of children are dubbed in to tell the story. came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're gonna have, what? I can't say good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager, I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. They tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem and that, that you can stay, stay is a stable. And then he just pointed the way they followed. Do you remember when you first heard the stories of Jesus? And if you were a child, how would you have told those stories? I absorbed the, the good news by osmosis. I was nurtured in the good news from childhood, baptized in the good news at South Shore Methodist Church in Chicago. I was taught the good news stories at Markham Park Church. I was confirmed in the good news at First United Methodist Church in DeKalb, and by God's grace, I was ordained 
to share the good news. My life has been permeated with good news. All of it profoundly beneficial, yet shallow compared to meeting Jesus the Christ. I've recounted to you the story of a Saturday night 47 years ago, a metal folding chair, a personal encounter. My life was without meaning and I was desperate for change. Although I knew the stories of Jesus, I did not know Jesus till that night. I could not see him. I did not hear him. There was no lightning. Still, I was aware of a presence. And I welcomed him into my mind, into my heart, into my being. Do you remember? Do you remember when you first heard the stories of Jesus? Do you remember when Jesus traveled the 10 inch distance between your head and your heart? Was it dramatic and instantaneous or was it subtle and gradual over time? Both are valid encounters with the saving grace of Jesus. Do you identify with a specific place, a location? Or do you simply have an awareness that for years he's just been living within me? The important thing to know his story and allow his story to become your story. The Apostle Paul had his own come to Jesus meeting, his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus. It's told three times in the book of Acts. Then 20 years after that encounter, he writes these Corinthian letters. He recites an early creed of the primitive church. He connects it to Hebrew scriptures like Isaiah 53. In this statement of faith, Paul tells us Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day in some physical form so that he encountered multiple people on multiple occasions. Paul tells us that, that the Jesus story is good news. It's the first thing he tells us. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you. Do you hear the good news? Do you feel the good news? Do you experience the good news? Jesus came proclaiming good news for all. Good news. Have you gone through a week without much good news? For all. Beth Moore cautioned us a few years ago about the dangers of thinking that the good news of Jesus was only for the select. This is what she wrote. When the gospel has become bad news to the poor, to the oppressed, to the brokenhearted and the imprisoned, and good news to the proud, self-righteous and privileged instead, it is no longer the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Beth has been an outstanding Bible teacher. Her conservative friends might not want to recognize it, but she's also an inspired preacher. And if she and I were to sit down in conversation, we might find areas of disagreement, but she and I would clearly agree there is liberation for all in Jesus Christ. That the gospel of Jesus begins as good news for the poor before it becomes good news for the privileged. And sometimes the gospel is only proclaimed as some form of bad news. Have you spent a week with the bad news? Our digital culture is captivated with bad news. Our newscasters spend hours shocking us with graphic violence and minutes on positive human activity. We, we find preachers fixated on the explosive bad news, the drama, rather than the healing goodness of Jesus. 
I remember hearing about a local church where the offering was taken at the end of the service. The pastor was preaching a long, angry sermon about all the evils in the world. A little girl tugged on her mother's sleeve. She said, Mommy, if we give him the money now, will he stop talking? The bad news is the backdrop, the cause of God's intervention in Christ. The good news is our liberation to become accountable for our behavior. Liberation, good news. The bad news is the suffering we cause each other, the pain we cause our creator, the damage we bring to our planet. The good news is taking responsibility for change. The bad news is the setting, but if our preaching ends with the bad news, we've done an injustice to the gospel and to the Savior. Jesus' primary task was bringing good news. The angel, as the children remembered, Luke chapter 2, the angel announced the birth of Jesus as good news. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus names his mission to bring good news. Reading from Isaiah in the synagogue, he said his purpose was to, to pro proclaim euangelion. That's a Greek term for good news, good message. Good news to the poor, good news to the captives. Good news for the blind, for the oppressed. Good news, God has smiled on humanity. Good news. Undeniably, the story is a product of the bad news of our sin, but it climaxes in the good news of God's redemption. John Paul Sampley described the gospel as good news, bad news. He died last September. His career included serving as a New Testament professor at Drew, at Indiana, and then at Boston Universities. As an author, he wrote this about our human role in salvation. He said, I've been amazed, not only at the grandeur and generosity of spirit we humans sometimes manifest, but also our persistent proclivity to shoot ourselves in the foot. He then captures the good news saying, God has laid claim on God's own creatures. God has loved us unlovely people. Good news, God loves us. The Apostle Paul's encounter with the resurrected Christ came in a voice, in a burst of a blinding light. He is still meeting people today. Jesus is still meeting people. Does it? make a difference to hear the good news again and again and again? How is your life a continuation of the story? What is there about your experience of Jesus somebody else needs to hear? How are you a link of transmission for the good news to somebody? Why are you in worship today? Are you in worship for a lecture on the current topics of interest? You can get that tuning into a cable network. Are you in worship to get the latest gossip? You can get that at the coffee shop or on Facebook. Are you in worship to hear the latest crime statistics and global crisis reports? You can get that bad news in the media. If you came here for some good news, that's what we do. The good news is that Jesus saves, he is present to heal, he is present to give help, he is present to give hope, he is present to transform us, to become servants for God, who love God and serve other people. Good news. Did you come for good news? We're here to proclaim good news. Good news. 
you might not hear it outside. There's good news. Every first Sunday of the month, we at Wesley United Methodist Church gather for the sacrament of Holy Communion. We believe that Christ is very much present at the table. Bishop Williman reminded us that United Methodists also believe in the real presence of Christ at the Lord's Supper, in the bread and in the wine, in the table talk and the fellowship, we are drawn into the living Christ. We are fed the living Christ. As Charles Wesley identified that good news in one of his communion hymns, he wrote of the mystery of Christ's presence here. He wrote, Oh, the depth of love divine, the unfathomable grace. Who shall say how bread and wine into man conveys? How the bread his flesh imparts, how the wine transmits his blood, fills his faithful people's hearts with the life of God. So you, you find Jesus here. That's the good news. You find him here. May you find him in this moment in these sacramental words that Pastor Melly now brings us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in the good and joyful thing always and every way to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and creates the fruits of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity and made the covenant made covenant to be our sovereign god you fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join the unending hymn holy 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 lord god of power and might Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O sun in the eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O sun in the eyes. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When, when we had turned aside from your way and abused your gift, you gave us in him your crowning gift emptying himself that our joy may be, may be full. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and the forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your words and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I remind you that you do not need to be a member of this church to share in the sacrament with us. All are welcome to the table. Carefully remove the wafer side. The body of Christ, broken for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat. Carefully open the other side of the chalice. The blood of Christ poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Will you join me in this responsive communion prayer? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Equip us to go into the world in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ 
is alive. Does it feel like Easter never ended? Good. Christ, Jesus, is among us. If you have not yet received him within your life, don't wait. Do so today. Christ, living Christ, thank you for the grace of your love, the kindness of your care. Fill us with yourself, your life, your joy, your peace, your love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated and enjoy Maureen's music. <laughs>